Hello, this is Ben Starr. Welcome to our Sydney studios. Well, joining me this afternoon, we've got Adrian Griffin, who is the Managing Director of Lithium Australia. How are you, Adrian? Very good, thanks, Benjamin. I tell you what, 2020 is going to be a very big year for you. You've got some new partnerships happening in China. Uh, we, we have indeed, yes. I think it's going to be a great year for Lithium Australia and its shareholders. Tell us a little about Lithium Australia and what you do. Uh, to a large extent, our, our business plan is about developing uh, technologies that deliver to the battery industry sustainable and ethical su supply. It's an amazing industry as we move more and more into electric cars and things. Where do you see the future of lithium really going? I think uh, further down the track we're going to have problems with supply. The demand is so great. Yeah. And we rely on it so much. We do. It's in just about everything we use on a daily basis. Exactly. And tell us, when you're extracting lithium, I mean, is it a very big process to, to gain this mineral? Well, it is, yeah. It's a complicated process and it goes through the, uh, the usual stages. You've got exploration, mining activities, concentration of the mineral itself, and then downstream processing into lithium chemicals and from there into battery materials. And, of course, battery is the final product that you and I use. Mm. And we're focused also not only on taking that through to battery production, but looking at end-of-cycle solutions mm. for the environment by recycling those used batteries. Now, that must be an amazing thing to be able to recycle stuff. How do you go about doing that? Because you've just uh, taken over a company that does all that type of thing. We have indeed, and in doing that, we've been expanding their plant capacity. Uh, we've been developing new partnerships, but I think uh, of prime importance is the processes that we've developed recover most of the materials in the batteries. If you compare that with uh, competitors around the world, uh, the first thing they don't recover is the plastic, and of course that's a major component of the, the batteries. If you take a battery pack, you've got plastic, you've got steel, you've got copper, you've got aluminium, and that's even before you get into the cells that actually contain the energy. And then we rip those apart and then process all the material inside it, including the anode, the cathode and the electrolytes. We recover all those materials and the plastics. So that gives us a big advantage over the competitors. So tell me, how do you recycle a battery? What are, you basically put it in a recycling thing. Will people be able to give these batteries back to a recycling plant Then you, that arrives at your place? And then what's the process? Well, you can't have a recycling business if you don't collect the battery. So it really starts with the collection and we're rolling out a collection network Australia-wide to resolve that issue. And I, I guess that's a global issue, not just an Australian issue. Mm -hmm. Revolves around making it easy for people to dispose of those batteries and educating them about the disposal. And then once you've collected them, it's a matter of shredding the battery. So you break it down into smaller sizes mm -hmm. and then use... Uh, mechanical means to separate those into various streams. And as I mentioned, there's uh, the plastic, which is a large component, steel, which are battery cases, and some of the framework that the battery might sit in. Mm. And then once you get down to the cell level, you've got the uh, battery active materials, the graphite, the lithium, the cobalt, the nickel, manganese, so on and so forth, uh, and other plastic components internally within those cells and the electrolyte materials also. So we recover all of those. It's amazing. As a consumer, and we're all guilty of this, we take it all for granted, don't we? We think a battery's a battery. We don't realise there's so many components that go into making a battery. And what it does is it's an amazing piece of technology, isn't it? Oh, there's absolutely no doubt. And, of course, we're not dealing with infinite resources. These resources do have... Uh, a finite resource base, and we can't afford to continue to mine these things, process these things, and as we are at the moment, throwing most of them away. It makes no commercial sense, it makes no environmental sense. And I suppose even retrieving them to recycle them now that they've been thrown away is an impossible task, really. Oh, it is, yeah. Once they go into landfill, they're gone forever. Yeah. And if you look, look at the balance on a global basis, that's what's happening to about... Uh, 90% uh, of the batteries. And in, in Australia, it's even worse than that, much worse than that. Do you find with this whole recycling thing that uh, the big companies are getting behind you? I mean, it's in their interest to get behind companies like yours? Oh, they are indeed. And we've uh, developed a, a number of partnerships 
with uh, major battery producers and companies that put batteries embedded in their products. Mm. Uh, so we're getting a lot of that material back from those people and we're trying to develop further partnerships to make sure we've got effectively uh, a terminal uh, market, if you like, a, steward a stewardship scheme for those batteries. So when someone produces a battery, they know what's going to happen to it at the, at the end of its useful life. Mm -hmm. Now, speaking of useful lives, I mean, you're looking at extending the lives of these things. Um, the types of people you employ in a recycling plant, they must be interesting. They must be technically minded, I suppose. <laughs> How do you get a oh, job in a recycling plant to help with the batteries? Well, not really, but um, it, it's certainly a lot to do with training and enthusiasm. Uh, let me say that. So there, there's no one out there that you can go and get off the street that has experience in that field. In fact, uh, if you look at the, the Australian Battery Recycling Scheme, or SCENE, mm -hmm. we are the only company in Australia that really recycles the batteries. Most other people are only moving waste from place to place and maybe recovering a small proportion of it. So we recover it all. We have to train people from scratch to do that. Yeah. And we've been very effective at developing a workforce that is efficient and works for us and are enthusiastic. I think that's a fantastic thing. And I think uh, given the way that the world's running and we're seeing all the kids getting very passionate about our environment, it's, it's something that you're leading the, leading the fold with. So uh, congratulations to you all. Oh, yes. And, and you certainly hit the nail on the head talking about the kids. Yeah. That's where the education has to start. And we have to bring the entire community into mm. the recycling mode, build the right attitude, make sure they don't forget to do what those batteries uh, need to be done with. And, mm. of course, if you start off with the school kids, they go home to mum and dad and they say, you can't throw that out. So they get brought up with that sort of mentality ingrained. So that's a great place to start. Well, that's right. I mean, you're seeing it now with the bottles and the collections of that. I mean, there are people that are making full-time careers out of collecting bottles from people's bins because, you know, jobs are a hard thing to get. And I spoke to one guy the other day, day and he's making quite a lot of money from it. So, you know, good on people for doing stuff. Your partnership happening in China, tell us a little bit about that and what does that involve? Well, that, that, that partnership, I guess it's dual pronged. Uh, and the partnership is with one of our subsidiaries, VSPC Limited, uh, which is a, a cathode powder producer. We've got uh, a pilot plant in Brisbane that produces those cathode powders. We have an arrangement with DLG Batteries in China, which effectively says if we can produce that cathode powder to a specification mm -hmm. uh, equivalent to or better than mm -hmm. locally manufactured cathode powders in China and at a competitive price, we will become a preferred supplier for that business. Now, we've met most of those criteria. And then the, the uh, next thing is physically producing that cathode powder on a large scale large enough to meet the requirements of a, a big battery producer such as DLG. So the second prong to that is setting up a deal with another company in China that already produces cathode powders of similar type to the type that we're producing. And we will produce our cathode powders through their plant in China to supply our other partners, primarily DLG in China. It's amazing, all the people that are involved in just getting a simple battery. We go to the shop and we buy it. We don't think that people like you are behind the scenes uh, running all these big companies and making such a big difference to our worlds. I mean, without you, we probably wouldn't be talking today. We're on battery. I'm using batteries just to talk to you via our uh, system here, our talkback system. Um, tell us a little bit more about the plans for 2020. Well, 2020, of course, if you get back to the uh, cathode powder production, our plans are to uh, commercialise our cathode powders in China and start producing commercial batteries with those cathode powders through DLG. Uh, we've got at the moment a three year program uh, signed up with SDL to do that commercialisation. Mm -hmm. And there are a number of uh, uh, stages to doing that, which ultimately will uh, result, we hope, in production of cathode powders, not only in China, but also outside China, expanding markets into places like uh, Europe and Japan. Uh, so that's, that's it with the uh, cathode business. Although I, sh I should say we are working on uh, the development of the next generation of cathode materials too for some of the things that you haven't even thought about to date. Because mm -hmm. uh, the battery industry, of course, is not a stagnant industry. There's a lot of R&D going on out there for new applications and better sure. batteries. So we're involved in all of that. 
with respect to the uh, recycling, I mentioned that uh, we're expanding plant capacity, we're commissioning that, we're, we're bringing on new partners to work with and supply us with uh, raw materials to feed that plant. Uh, and for the benefit of shareholders, our plan is to spin that business off uh, as an IPO, giving them the opportunity to directly invest in the recycling. Uh, so the, there's a lot to be done there and we're making terrific headway with respect to that. Uh, and also we're making a lot of headway with our primary extraction technologies mm -hmm. and in particular dealing with what I believe is one of the scourges to the lithium industry mm -hmm. and that is very fine grain material generated during the course of producing commercial, commercial spodumene concentrates. At the moment, those materials, the fine materials, mm. uh, go into tailings dams and there is no commercial recovery. We have developed uh, a means by which that can be recovered, mm -hmm. uh, effectively improving utilisation of resources, giving greater sustainability and utilising materials that otherwise simply get thrown away. So we believe that has a, a big future and we're working towards commercialising that process as well. You're definitely in the right uh, era because it's all about the youth and they are the ones that are driving a lot of activations around our country at the moment. I actually had the opportunity yesterday to go on a battery operated bus or battery uh, petrol operated bus um, and governments are big leaders in this technology. I mean, without governments, uh, a lot of this stuff sometimes never gets off the ground. Do you do a lot of work with government? Yeah, we do. In fact, uh, one of our major technical partners is ANSTO, uh, the Australian Nuclear Science and Technology Organisation. They do a lot of our uh, uh, laboratory work, testing work and development work. Uh, we're also involved with uh, uh, various uh, liaisons with universities, CSIRO and, CSIRO and so on and so forth, so on and so forth. <laughs> and I, I think you mentioned something very interesting and that is a lot of this wouldn't occur without government assistance mm. and government has the ability to stimulate research and development uh, by a number of means. There is a research and development rebate program, as you're probably aware, through the Australian Taxation Office. Uh, very important for R&D companies and developers of new technology. And there are significant funds available through uh, the CRCs, the uh, uh, Cooperative Research Programs that uh, pull in and uh, effectively partner government with free enterprise. Mm. Uh, and there's, there's a very large one in Australia at the moment, the uh, so-called FBI, Future Battery Industry CRC, which is funded to the tune of about... Uh, $130 million, I think, mm. uh, half through industry and half through government. And those things are required to get the absolute maximum benefit out of research and development and make sure Australia leads the field. I mean, it must be interesting. You must go to a lot of conferences like, uh, you know, how there's conferences for homewares and stuff. Do they have a battery conference where all of you get together and talk about all this stuff? Or you're, you seem One to be the conference. world leader. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's a plethora of those conferences. It must be amazing. Uh, well, it is, and on a global basis, and most of them are uh, centred around research and development. It's mm. absolutely fascinating to see what people are doing out there. Uh, you know, we, we see the lithium-ion battery as being uh, the mainstay of our communications today, and our things like laptops, yep. mobile phones, communication towers, of course. Exactly. You know, they're all... All those things are run off uh, lithium-ion batteries. But I, I think the lithium-ion battery that we use today will become, uh, to some extent, a dinosaur. It's going to get uh, replaced. It'll be lithium technology, I might add, but uh, it, there'll be different chemistries, different configurations, and much more uh, efficiency built into those things. You'll have a much higher energy density, which yes. means you won't have to cha charge your mobile phone for five days and that sort of thing. So we are going to see big changes and that's where the research and development is taking place. Well, exactly. And even in health, I mean, look at all the people with pacemakers. Indeed. Another world, isn't it? Well, look, Adrian, thank you very much for joining us today. It's been fascinating talking about the 2020 plans and we look forward to talking to you more throughout the year. OK, Benjamin, thank you very much. There you go. That's Adrian Griffin, Managing Director of Lithium Australia.